time for a little R&R for the Cincinnati Bengals. Hi again, everyone, and welcome into Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Erpine of AllBengals.com here at Paycor Stadium, where you might hear some leaf blowers in the distance as they clean up the stands from Sunday's big win over the Carolina Panthers. But the Bengals themselves, as in the players, well, they're ready for plenty of R&R on this by week rest and relaxation in my own Michael Scott voice maybe you'll get that maybe you won't regardless the Bengals uh, excited to go into the bye with the five and four record certainly happy that they ended things the right way a few days ago here at Paycor Stadium but let's get to the notes of the day because the Bengals held their final practice right here inside Paycor essentially a walk through a little workout uh, on the field uh, before players leave for a few days um, really until Monday and First things first, DJ Reader, well, he was working out in this end zone over here. And Lou Anarumo updated his status, said that he is hopeful that DJ Reader will be clear to practice when the Bengals get back from their bye, which would be huge, obviously. You know, I, it, literally we asked Lou, oh, well, what does he do for you and do for this defense? And he said everything from commanding double teams to being great in the run game to getting more push up the middle against, uh, you know, from a pass rush standpoint. So uh, Lou Anarumo excited to potentially get DJ Reader back. Dax Hill uh, had an MRI on his shoulder. It's not as bad, I think, as they initially thought. He's dealing with, uh, you know, uh, something that I, I think he's going to be able to play with. And whether it's Pittsburgh, Tennessee, or I think worst case, Kansas City, he's going to be back, avoid injured reserve and certainly be able to play again, not only this season, but maybe again as soon as the Bengals are back on the field again. So we'll see there if uh, if that's the case. Um, as far as Chris Evans goes, grade two PCL, we're not really sure uh, how long he could be out. Obviously, Travion Williams is on the active roster. It's not like they would necessarily make a roster move uh, from that standpoint. So now that the injuries are out of the way, um, and we, we talked about Mike Hilton, at least posted it here, Mike Hilton, expected to be back despite dealing with uh, the finger injury, broken in three spots, underwent surgery. He says he's going to play against Pittsburgh. So overall, the Bengals hopefully getting healthier here. Get Hilton back would be great. Getting DJ Reader back would be great. You get to those two pieces back for the Pittsburgh game would be huge. What about punter? And, and I, I think that that is a discussion that we should have right now on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. By the way, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. Punter it's been a struggle for Kevin Huber. There's no doubt about it. You know, 38 uh, yards per punt over the past couple of games, had a 23-yard punt against the Browns, which is just over half of his age. And I'm not trying to be mean there. It's just you should be able to punt your age. And Lou Anarumo talked about it, or, or Darren Simmons, excuse me, talked about it. And one thing he said, and you're about to hear from Darren Simmons, but one thing he said on Monday was how well Kevin Huber was practicing but it wasn't translating to games, which to me is a bit odd. Here's Darren Simmons on Kevin Huber's struggles and the fact that they are reevaluating or at least evaluating the punter spot and whether or not they should turn to Drew Christmas. Well, I think he's been, he's been struggling a little bit. It's, that's no secret. I think he'll be the first to tell you that. It's, uh, he's, got himself, he's got himself in a bit of a slump too. That, uh, I think he, he made a pretty good analogy. He said he's, he's great on the practice range. He's not taking it to the first tee. And he's been his practice has been pretty solid. Um, his pregame warmups have been solid. He's just not taking it to the game. He's, he's got to figure out how to get that, you know, from the range or to the first tee. And uh, he's just not doing a very good job of that right now. It's a variety of things that have, have figured into his inconsistency. And uh, it's just been a, a myriad of those issues. And I think as you get older, you know, your margin for error becomes really small. Some of these guys are, that are real strong and real powerful have young young legs. You know, can get away with some things. Can get away with to get off times, being a little slower, get away with the drop, not being in exactly the right spot. They can adjust. And, uh, um, you know, his, his margin for error with some of that stuff is just it's just reduced, you know, compared to what it used to be. Uh, with Drew on the practice squad, is the buy a time to evaluate where things stand? Well, I mean, like, like I said, we, we've const I've constantly been evaluating this whole thing. Um, our punting game, obviously our punting game's got to improve. Um, you know, we're not, we're not getting out of it what we need to get out of it in terms of flipping the field. And so it's something we'll take a look at over the, over this uh, bye week and, and uh, try to figure out what the best thing is going forward. Oh, I, you know, I don't know. But it, that's something we'll, we'll talk about, I'll think about. You know, we've, we've got whatever it is, how many days to figure that out. Um, it, you know, but this is something that's, that's uh, certainly been building over some time, you know, for sure. And we've got to do something to, you know, 
put our team in a good spot to control field position, and we, we've got to be better with that. So How? Sorry to cut you off. That's right. That's good. How has uh, Drew handled this? Obviously, he wanted to make the team and wanted to be the starting yeah. punter, but how has he handled being on the practice squad? Well, I, I think he's handled it real well. You know, it, uh, uh, it it was obviously a competition, you know, in training camp, and there were certain things that Drew needed to improve on coming out of camp. The reason, you know, I identified with him, the reason he didn't make our team. And, you know, again, to, to go back to the golf um, equation a little bit, it's, it's like... Uh, the changes he needed to make um, would have been like him trying to make the week before the Masters. You know, it's difficult to make a bunch of changes um, like that when you're ready to go into competition. Mm -hmm. Those are changes that have to be made earlier. You know, way back in the off season because you know you, you ultimately you could go backwards if you make those changes right then before he's getting ready to play a tournament or getting ready to play uh, in, in preseason games. So knowing we've had some time, you know, ever since he's been on the practice squad. We've had more time to tweak and adjust, and uh, he's been very receptive to that. And, and you know, really, he's been punting the ball well um, in practice. You know, we 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 use a little different kicking schedule with him than we do with Kevin, and so they're not kicking always on exactly the same days. Uh, but but I think he's handled it very well. Um, he's been very open to it, and I think he's done a good job. No video of Darren Simmons. It was an audio only session, but you get the gist. There is. The fact that they are considering something, and they should be. Look, this is a contending team, and their goal is to win a Super Bowl. And so you have to evaluate every option. And it just happens to, to be a guy like Drew Chrisman is on the ro or is on the practice squad. Can easily be promoted to the roster. He's a guy that you've developed and spent a lot of time with. And you heard what Simmons said there about the fact that Chrisman had some things to work on from a punter's perspective, not necessarily a holding perspective. And that's why he didn't win the job in camp. Well, he's had nine weeks plus to work on those things. So if, one, Huber's underperforming, two, Chrisman's better than he was at the start of the season, maybe you go that route. In the beauty of Chrisman being on the practice squad, you don't have to cut Huber. You could literally give Chrisman a tryout. You could bench Huber, make him inactive, promote Chrisman from the practice squad, and let him punt be one of your practice squad elevations. So it's just an option for the Bengals where they do have some flexibility there to see, you know, if, if they want to try out Chrisman, they could certainly go that route. And, again, I want to hammer this home because there's a lot of speculation about the holding. It is not a holding issue for Drew Chrisman. He's still holding in practice. Uh, Simmons told me, uh, you know, two to three reps every practice where he's holding. Obviously, Huber gets the majority of them because he is on the roster, but Chrisman is still keeping that sharp as well. And he's working out here pregame, much like he, he's getting all of his game day kicks in. So he's getting used to the game day structure of things. I, I think that that's certainly on the table here as the Bengals reevaluate things, self-scout. And that's what the Bengals coaches are going to be doing over the next couple of days. And then they'll take a break as well, and they should. Look, the season is a grind. I can't believe we're already in week 10 of the NFL season. Feels like we were just at training camp. So on one hand – Man, it flies by. On the other hand, it's also November, and it has been a grind. And it's, it's just it's one of those things. So if it's a grind for Cincinnati Bengals talk, imagine what the actual Bengals, you know, the grind, it, it's been for them. So certainly uh, good for the coaches to get a break. And, look, despite the Bengals being on a break, you know what's not on a break? My bookie. And my bookie is the place you need to go right now to wager on all things NFL college football it's a big college football slate this weekend huge with nba going on so the sports world is going crazy and yeah whether it's thursday night whether it's sunday night whether it's monday whether it's sunday afternoon look i'm gonna be red zone all day sunday i can't wait i'm gonna have my feet up and you know what i'm gonna be if you're gonna wager it's got to be my bookie use promo code bangles talk right now and you're gonna get a 100 percent double deposit boom so if you deposit 500 bucks you're going to get another 500 with my bookie up to $1,000 with promo code Bengals Talk. Make sure you use promo code Bengals Talk and get to my bookie today. Look, this team, good vibes today. Uh, I, I have a ping pong update for you uh, right now. Mitch Wilcox is number one in the Bengals rankings, followed by Joe Burrow. In their last rankings match, Joe Burrow got second, third. And this is what the little birdie told me. I'm not going to say who. Tyler Boyd dethroning Trent Taylor from the top three. 
That never happens. Trent Taylor is considered the best in the room. Well, right now, he is fourth. That is your top four. Rankings are updated weekly. Obviously, it takes a break because of the bye. But Mitch Wilcox won. Usually, he's number one or two. Joe Burrow making the leap to number two from usually three. Boyd going from four to three. And Trent Taylor bottoming out at number four. Uh, I'm sure there's some other guys in there that might debate it and argue who's what. But that is your ping pong update. And it's fun. It's, it's been fun watching these guys play. They're good. I'm competitive. So I would love to play. Guess what? I suck at ping pong. So guess who's not going to be playing ping pong anytime soon? Not that they would let me, you know. Two tables are going nonstop. But, you know, I would talk a little trash if I thought I could actually hold, my, hold up my end of the bargain. Can't back it up. No trash talk. But, by the way, just because the Bengals are on a bye, I just want to remind you, we aren't. Joe Goodberry has Bengals on the brain tonight, 8 o'clock, Tuesday night, 8. If you're watching this after Tuesday, then the video is already up, and you need to check it out. Film breakdown. Joe Mixon, the run game, Tyler Boyd, Joe Burrow, the defense, so much more on Bengals on the Brain. Also, we're going to talk with Dan Horde, the voice of the Bengals, this week. So just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and understand that you're going to get Bengals content here that you're not going to get anywhere else. So hit subscribe. Tell someone, tell a friend you know. Shout out to my man in the elevator, by the way, and I, I should have got your name, man, uh, on Sunday. He was like, I got to get all my Bengals friends that are fans on to Cincinnati Bengals talk as well because you recognize me in the elevator, which is awesome. And you know what? This is the, the shout-out. Hit this like button so more people can see us uh, on this video. But also, please, please, please tell your Bengals friends that they need to, to join the movement, the Cincinnati Bengals talk movement, CBT. So for Andrew Fox Miller, I'm James Rapine signing off at Paycor Stadium for the, the final time this week. In, until next week, at least here at Paycor, uh, I appreciate you watching. As always, I'm James Rapine signing off on Cincinnati Bengals Talk.